dangerously yours. Dangerously Yours, a half hour of romance and adventure brought to you at this time each Sunday by the Vic Chemical Company, and today bringing you a special short version of Masquerade, an exciting tale of espionage in the Budapest of 1915. I am adventure. In my name, men have traversed the highways, the byways, the skyways of the world. I have tramped the jungles with explorers. I have ridden the wilderness road on horseback and in covered wagons. I have gone 20,000 leagues under the seas and as many leagues above them. I have been the fire of Captain Kidd and Walter Raleigh and John Paul Jones and Francois Villon. That fire that burns in the heart of youth, that makes men dream and dare and conquer. I am the spirit of romantic adventure. I am dangerously yours. Today, follow me to a dark room in the Europe of 25 years ago, where a woman sits looking across a desk into eyes that are focused on history. Masquerade! Countess Rachola, you have our reasons for choosing you for this mission. You are very young, you are clever, and you are very beautiful. Because of your youth, you should be exceptionally valuable to us. I am at your command, Excellency. From now on, you'll forget my title. In all our communications, you will address me as Mr. Kolenkov. Now, let us get on to facts. I hope the Count will not be too difficult for you. He's a shrewd man. Now, when you have obtained our information, you will conceal the message in this silver pencil. Send it to me immediately. Trust no one. We rely on your discussion. I understand. Very well. Now, in these papers, you will find all the necessary information about Count Stefan. It has already been arranged just how you will meet him. Tonight, you will take the train to Budapest... <laughs> Good evening, madame. Have my bag sent to suite 913. Yes, madame. Call in, Mr. Lingley. Good evening, Countess Rishola. Good evening. Good boy. Welcome back, Countess Rishola. Thank you, Baudrey. Our table for one, madame. Is Count Estefan dining? Oh, he's at the table by the window, madame. My dear, I can't imagine whatever possessed him to wear that hat. I would. I told Benson my price was five thousand dollars. This morning, when I was riding in the park, I saw Duffy on the bridle path. He. W- I beg your pardon, madame. Here is the necklace and the rings and the bracelet you gave me, Luigi. Take them back. I'm through. Oh, just a moment, madame. You've made a. Uh, madame, wait. Can I be of service, Count Estefan? Did you see the young lady who stopped at my table? Yes. She left these jewels. I don't understand. Uh, Do you know who she is? She is the Countess Rishola. She's in suite 913. Just a moment. Madame, you have made a mistake. My name is not Luigi. I have never seen you or these jewels before. I know. Won't you come in, Count Estefan? You... You know who I am. But of course, you were the most handsome man in the dining room. And I was very lonely. So I thought tonight I will have an adventure. I will make the acquaintance of the distinguished Count Estefan. How do you know my name? It was not difficult to find out. How did you know I wouldn't run off with your jewels? I took that chance. Besides, they're insured. (laughs) Are you angry? (laughs) No, I am not angry. (laughs) If some kind fate wishes to send a beautiful lady to dine with me, I can only be grateful. You will do me the honor, won't you, madame? I shall be delighted. (laughs) 
What would you like for dinner? What does a count eat? Pheasant's wings and peacock's breasts and... <laughs> what do you usually eat? <laughs> what does a contes usually eat? Almost anything. Well, then, uh, how about roast beef? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Right up, Monsieur Dame. And watch Mademoiselle in the red hat shoot the little clay pigeon. Step right up. I'll never be able to hit a thing. Don't let me down before all these people. I'll try. Good heavens. Hand the little lady down a dancing doll. <laughs> Look, Catherine, a shooting star. Did you wish? Oh, I didn't have time. Then there is something you wish for. Yes. What did you wish? I was wishing that we were two other people. Two people who need not say goodbye. Perhaps it can be that way. Forgive me, your lordship... But I'm not easy in my mind about this business. Oh, I wish you wouldn't go to see that woman tonight, sir. How could I stay away? Elbert, for the first time in my life, I'm completely head over heels in love. But, Count Estefan, I... I know what you're thinking. I have a mission to perform, and I have no right to fall in love. But things don't always work out the way we'd like to have them work out, eh, Elbert? Oh, I don't know what's to come of all this, sir. No, Elbert, neither do I. Neither do I. But perhaps we shall find out tonight... I have received a message for you from Mr. Kolenkov. What is it? He said that you must obtain our information immediately. That you've taken too long. You ought to get it tonight. Tonight? Mr. Kolenkov has been lenient with you because this is your first mission. But he will not be lenient any longer. It is not wise to anger Mr. Kolenkov. He is a dangerous enemy. Forgive me, Catherine. I was sent to serve you as a maid, not to give you advice. You're right. Don't worry. The mission will be completed tonight. You have the silver pencil? Yes. Then I will wait for you at the appointed place. Do not fail us. The mission will be completed tonight. Catherine, I offer you the three things most dear to me. My heart, my country... And my dream. You are too generous. Catherine, you must listen to me. Since that first hour we met, I've been completely yours. There's never been anyone else for me. There never will. Oh, please, please don't say any more. There are worlds between us, worlds that can't be bridged with words. You said one night that you wished we were two different people. I think you may have that wish, Catherine. Why, what do you mean? Only that my country is close to its victory and may not need so much of my service any longer. Close to victory? I'm going to tell you something tonight, Catherine. Something that will put my life in your hands. Your life? It would mean my life were the news to get to certain circles, yes. Then don't tell me. How do you know you can trust me? I love you. And I believe you love me. You're quite wrong. This has been only an adventure to me. That isn't true, Catherine. It is true. You smiled at me. I was flattered. It was an adventure for a holiday mood. You may as well take my heart, Catherine. It's already full of you. You walked into it the day we met. You're a fool, Rudolf Estefan. Oh, <laughs> but isn't any man who falls in love? Do you know what you are to me? You're something to believe in again. You're a type of person that had ceased to exist for me. A fine and honest woman. Oh, my darling, you're such a child. Take your foolish little dream in your heart and go. Please go. What is it? What's wrong, my dear? You know nothing about me. You've known me only three weeks. Three weeks? Catherine, I've known you all my life. All your life. It's true. I've seen you in a thousand plays, read you in as many books. When I've heard beautiful music, I've thought she'd like that. I've looked at flowers and known that one day I'd give them to oh, you. Oh, stop, stop. You must listen to me. I'm not that woman. Perhaps I was once, but I'm not now. You see, you were wrong. You can't trust me. Are you trying to tell me that someone whose name we both know and won't mention sent you? 
What are you saying? You see, I've known all along. I had Albert look you up the day you arrived. And it... It didn't make any difference? It didn't make any difference. You see, I trust you. You came here to betray me and to betray my country. That is your mission, Countess Richola. And yet I am so sure of your love that I will trust you with my life and what is far more valuable, the life of my country. I will betray you. If you do, you will betray yourself at the same time. Yes. Yes, I know. So you shall know my secret. Even now, as we sit here, there is a great network growing tighter around the foremost nations of the world. Treaties, pacts, alliances being formed against the man who sent you. Tonight, I will sign a pact that will set the wheels in motion to destroy him. Destroy him? No. He's made a great many mistakes. The greatest of all was sending you here, Catherine. Why? He knew I should love you. But he did not guess that you would fall in love with me. No. He didn't guess that. Then you do see that you cannot betray him. If I betray you, I betray myself. If I betray him, I betray my country. My country is very dear to me. Dearer than I? No. No, not dearer than you. Then will you help me defeat him? Help you? Defeat him? By telling me his plans. That's the only way I can hope to defeat him. We can't both win. You'll see, Catherine. I'm beginning to see. Then you will help me. By giving you any information I may possess concerning our plans? Yes. <sighs> You're very clever, aren't you? Oh, I can read you like a book now. You thought I was young and easily swayed. That you could make me love you. And I would throw over my country, my duty for That's you. That's not the way to look at it, Catherine. You weren't so wise after all. Because you've lost, you hear me? Lost. You guessed wrong in our little duel of wits. You forgot how close hate is to love. You don't know what you're saying, Catherine. You never loved me. You knew that I loved you. And you used that. Catherine, stop talking like a child. We're playing for countries now. Yes, we are, aren't we? This is a gun in my hand, Rudolph. I'd advise you to be careful what you say. Well, rather melodramatic, aren't you? Tell me, will I be the seventh notch on the gun or the eighth? <laughs> Do you mind if I smoke? Smoke? I always smoke at the theater. Somehow it enhances the performance. You can do anything you please, Rudolph. But you have very little time to do it in. You mean you're actually going to kill me? I mean just that. Well, go ahead. I'll do this my own way. Look. You already know my purpose in being here. Now you will either give me my information or I will kill you. You have until nine o'clock. You won't do it. You can't pull the trigger. You can't pull it because you love me. It takes a very brave and a very cold woman to do that, Catherine. I don't think you can. Isn't that true? Isn't that why you're waiting? That's not true. Or is it that you want to watch your victim? You want my heart to constrict with agony, my hands to shake. You want me to plead for my life so you can make a generous gesture and spare me. Sorry, Catherine, I don't seem to be in the mood for prayers tonight. You don't think I'll do it. That's why you're so brave. You don't think I'll do it. You wouldn't be so brave otherwise. You're a coward at heart. You lied to me. You deceived me. You tried to deceive me. I'm tired of listening to you. You gave me your heart, you know. You'd like me to hand it back whole again. But I won't. You will live a long time yet, Catherine, an eternity without me. You will look into the faces of passers-by, hoping for something that will, for an instant, bring me back to you. You will find moonlit nights strangely empty, because when you call my name through them, there will be no answer. Always your heart will be aching for me, and your mind will give you the doubtful consolation that you did a brave thing. You dare to talk of bravery. What else do we have to talk about, Catherine? For me, there will never be another woman but you. But for my heart, there is another love that must come before you. My country. You are so still. 
Your face is like ice. What are you thinking, Catherine? What does anything you can say matter? You betrayed me with words. What good are words? And your heart is breaking. If I fail now, I should deserve to die. You tricked me into loving you. Aren't you forgetting that you came here for the same purpose? I couldn't have betrayed you. I tried to tell you. You said you already knew. I was as honest as I knew how to be. Do you think I wanted to love you? Knowing where you came from and what your mission was? Don't you suppose that every hour we were together, I was thinking she's just pretending? I wasn't. I loved you. And I loved you so much, I let you pretend. Because you brought something to my days I couldn't stand the thought of losing. Listen to your heart, Catherine. Feel it pounding. Your time is up. Then my last words. I love you, Catherine. You're determined to die with a lie on your lips. I love you, Catherine. Oh, God. Albert. Albert. Where are you, sir? I heard a shot. Help me up. I'll be all right. Help me up. Oh, I knew you should never have come here. I'll get a doctor. No, 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 no. No, it's too late. I waited right by the door like you told me to, sir. The other woman went downstairs about ten minutes ago. Please let me get a doctor, sir. No, no. I I want you to send a message, though, at once. The usual destination. Yes, sir. Kalenkov. The masquerade is over. X-32 reports that Countess Richelieu is trustworthy and loyal. You may entrust in her care any documents. She will not betray you. Report case 255 closed. X-32. Conceal it as usual, Albert, in the silver pencil. Please let me call her back. You must tell her the truth before it's, before it's too late. Tell her the truth? Tell her the truth so that she will watch the stars through tears instead of following the one cold star that is her destiny? No, no, Albert. Let her think I never loved her. One day, she will follow a flag to the same fate as mine. We must leave her the strength for that hour. I am adventure. Today you have shared the adventure of masquerade with me. Next week I bring you jungle harvest, take you to the tropic paradise of Samburan to share the adventure of a gentle, peace-loving man suddenly forced to pit his wits against the sinister and the dangerous in order to save his own life and the life of the girl he loves. Until then, I am dangerously yours.